this fall, I built a cabin on a remote piece of property in the upper Midwest. I worked by myself and enjoyed every minute of it. The beautiful fall weather, the changing of the seasons, putting together something that hopefully my family is going to enjoy for generations to come. But ultimately, I ran out of materials and good weather. And although I got the cabin to a point where you could heat it and you could stay in it, there's so much left to do. I got just a couple days of weather where I can probably get back in to the cabin and try to get some more stuff done before the road is impassable. This is what it looks like right now. Just drive in the spot where there are no trees. That's basically the best instruction. <clears throat> Well, the plan is simple. I've got the material in the truck to do the trim. I've got the sealant to put on the floor. I've got the paint for the end walls. I've got the tools I think I need, and I've got just a little bit of time to do it. Sure is nice to be back here. And it's good to see that everything is just the way I left it. What a beautiful time of year to be back here at the cabin. Well, I got here quite late in the day, so the best thing I can do right now is just get things tidied up and settle in for the evening. And wash that filthy window. It's amazing how quick life slows down when you get to a place like this. I'm already relaxed. Now tonight is gonna be the first night I've ever stayed in this cabin, and I sure am looking forward to it. Tomorrow is gonna to be nothing but work, and hopefully by the end of the day, I'll be ready to put that coat of sealant on the floor. And at that point, I'm gonna to have to head out, because who wants to stay the night in a cabin that smells like floor sealant? I'll just come back a couple weeks once it's aired back out and enjoy this place again. This time of year, it seems like the night lasts forever. It's dark by 545. But I've got stuff to think about. Think about getting done. I've got silence when I want silence. i got the radio when I want something to listen to. And now, I've got a grilled cheese sandwich. I don't know what else you could want. Seems like this cabin was built on corned beef hash. I don't know if I had a can of corned beef hash in the last 10 years, but that seems to have been the thing for breakfast and lunch every day building this cabin.
And what you can't eat a breakfast like this every day. It sure seems like the right thing to have while you're here. Well, I gotta say, I got a pretty good night's sleep last night. Got dark about 5 o'clock, got light about 6.30 or so. And I pretty much slept almost all of it. Dead quiet, wind died down. Really peaceful. First night in the cabin. Mmm. So the first thing this morning I need to do is get everything that's in the cabin and get it out of the cabin. So I can work on the floor and work on the trim and work on the end walls. Whole lot to do. You never remember what you forgot to bring until you remember it. And in this case, what I really should have had that I forgot to bring was a long bladed knife for cutting off this insulation once it dries. You just gotta make do with what you got. But there's always something you forget. And then there's breaks that you need to take whether you want to or not. My brother Ryan and I built this outhouse early this spring. I've only got one brother, and we've always been real close, and it sure was a fun time to come up here and work on a project together. Not only that, but this little building is the most important building on the property. Sure is odd to see our old tent camping site empty for the season. Time to get back at it. Well, the first thing on the to-do list is to paint the end walls. I've got to get the painting done before I wrap in the windows with trim or trim around the end walls. Now the material on these end walls is what's called beadboard. Back in the day they actually cut individual strips of board with a little router design on the edge. But today you just buy it in a sheet. It's already white, but you gotta paint it to cover up all the nail holes and seams. As a concrete guy by trade, I'm used to working with thousands of pounds of material at a fast pace. Working with shovels and chainsaws and sludge hammers is right up my alley, but painting is really out of my wheelhouse. Don't do much of it, and every time I do, it feels weird. Now here's something that's desperately needed shelf. Right now the only place I have in this cabin to set anything is on the stove and the windowsill or on the floor. 
Not only that, but when I go to put a coat of sealant on this floor, everything that stays in this cabin is going to have to be on this shelf, or I'm going to have to leave it on the porch. It's also a great place to store this little battery power station. With this string of LED lights in that power station, I've pretty much got this cabin lit. Once I'm done trimming this foam out, I can be done with my grandpa's handsaw. I think I'm going to put it in its final place. It can stay here at the cabin. That's a great spot for it. Once the excess foam has all been cut out, these windows are at that point ready to be cased in with trim. But right now what I need to do is I need to seal the edges of the floor so I can trim around the bottom of the wall. And then when I am ready to put the sealant on the floor, that little strip along all the edges will be done. At this stage of the build, the thing that really needs to be kept in mind is what needs to be done in what order, so you're not tripping over yourself or going back and doing things that you should have done before. Now we can cut all the trim to match the actual measurements of the window openings. And what a beautiful day to cut trim. Tiny bit of snow falling and the weather's calm. But the weather forecast is calling for four to six inches of snow starting tonight. So this is my window. I have to get this done today or I might not get it done at all. One problem is, is I forgot the rip fence on my table saw. So I'm going to have to improvise. Not only that, I forgot the guard that covers the belt that drives the table saw. So I'm going to have to be extra careful. I'll just use a couple pieces of scrap trim to fabricate a rip fence for my table saw. And then we should be in business. Now for window trim and sills, all I'm using is just a standard three quarter inch pine board. Cheap, easy to work with, and it always looks nice. Now all these trim pieces are gonna be cut to the exact size they need to be, except the sill. It can stay the full five and a half inches wide. You want somewhere to set your coffee cup, right? the coyotes. Oh, that's cool. I can count on one hand how many times I've heard them in the daytime like this. really cool. Well, the coyotes quit howling and they got back to doing whatever coyotes do, so I guess I better get back to doing what I'm here to do. Cut trim. Now it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that this is a dangerous saw. So I'm taking the utmost care to watch where I'm at and what I'm doing. Now 
Now I would use a push stick to push these 1x4s through the end of the cut, but I'd be dropping them right down onto a moving belt, and that's a bad idea. I'm walking around the saw and slowly pulling them through. A lot of people will tell you this is not the way to go, and I won't tell you it is the way to go. So I've made this job a lot less safe by forgetting to bring things that make this saw safe. But a long time ago, every piece of machinery was just as dangerous as this one, and I'm going to use the safety gear the old timers had. Caution and attention. Now when it comes to nailing off trim, a real luxury is one of these small little pneumatic brad nailers. This one cost me $20 years ago from Menards. The pancake air compressor, well, like, we got that for free somewhere. And it's the worst thing in the world to listen to. But it sure is nice when you're nailing up trim like this. The other issue with that air compressor is that because it's so small, it's constantly having to kick itself back on to charge back up. Now for the trim that goes along the bottom of the wall and where the wall meets the ceiling, and in the corners of the room, I'm just going to take this 1x4 and split it right in half. Now trim can be extremely fancy and extremely expensive, but it doesn't have to be, especially not for something like this. If you want to learn a lot of carpentry shortcuts, watch Larry Hahn videos. He would mark a lot of stuff in place like I'm doing right here. And a cut that seems to be very difficult, it becomes super simple. For anybody just getting into carpentry, Larry Hahn videos are wonderful because he really demystifies the process. See how easy that was and how nice that fits? The first few houses Brooke and I built 20 years ago, everything was nailed by hand, including the trim. And though to this day I still don't own a framing nailer, I don't think I'll ever go back to nailing trim by hand. These little brad nailers are pretty fantastic. Now here's another Larry Hahn maneuver. He would never get a tape measure out to measure the gap to put this trim in. He would put the trim in and mark it in place. I mean, that's super simple. And so much quicker than making a measurement and then measuring your stock and cutting your stock to the measurement. Just put it in place and mark it. Now every cabin needs a door. And every door needs a doorknob. Putting in a doorknob is about the simplest thing there is to do. Now the doorknob has a lot more to it than what you would think. A lot of backcountry cabins never lock the door. If somebody needs to use your cabin in the middle of the winter time, they could just come in and, and get warm around a fireplace or a wood stove. A lot of places in the far north never locked their cabin. Now here on the other hand, that's a little bit different. There's a lot of bear hunting in this area. And people are traveling across property lines sometimes without knowing it. I don't think you would find a trapper lost in the woods that would need your cabin here as much as you might find somebody running a pack of dogs and just stumbling upon your cabin by accident. Having the option to lock a door, well, it's probably a good idea.
Well, the very last thing I had hoped to get done was to put a thick coat of sealant on the floor. And I thought I'd be out of here by this evening, but that didn't happen. So time to fire the wood stove back up and settle in for the evening. Once the floor is sealed, I'm just going to shut the door and leave. But there's no sense doing it this time of night. Driving out of the bush in the snow in the dark. But spending another quiet, peaceful night in this cabin? Well, you don't have to twist my arm. But while I'm stuck inside for the night, I've got things I can do here. I gotta hang up some hooks so I can hang some stuff up. That's something I can knock out. I'll have myself a little bit of toast and jam before I turn in. I'll set my alarm for early in the morning. Try to beat the snow. Mm. Well, so much for getting out of here before it snowed. That didn't happen. But it also wasn't six inches. Before I knew it, I pretty much had all the trim done, except that little piece over the stove, because the stove was hot. Time to get this beautiful pine floor sealed. I've been so nervous about this, you'd hate to mess up these beautiful boards with a stain or with a boot print you can't sand out. Turns out those hooks I put up are a wonderful place to put the cots and get them up off the floor. So that worked out great. I sure am thankful for this opportunity to wrap a few things up. But what a beautiful place to be. Well, the weather gave me a window to get back in here and get a little bit more wrapped up. Got the trim done, got a coat of sealant on the floor. I'm pretty happy. For everybody that's followed this series, I hope you've enjoyed it. My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. And be radical, eh? See you soon. <laughs>